Hello, Internet. I'm me. And this is My Little Pony Friendship is Magic episode, which I believe is episode 21, is uh, one that I've been wanting for a long time. We've all had our Fluttershy episode. Now we get a Spike episode. And this is good. Very good. Now, of course, Spike is a civilized dragon, so I must be civilized through this whole review. So, let's start at the beginning. Spike is uh, actually not in this episode at the beginning. It's actually Fluttershy who's the main focus. Partially because she doesn't want to come out of her cottage to go see the migration of the dragons. It's very nice, I heard. Not as good as the migration of the butterflies, but uh, we won't hold that against them. I really am drinking something in here. It's coffee. Anywho, so with Fluttershy not coming out of her cottage and then jumping out of a window, no, it's not as exciting as you'd think. It's actually quite funny. But um, the, some, the other five actually go out and watch the migration of the dragons. Spike coming up in a pink apron with a heart on it. Keep your composure. Uh, handing out snacks. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm not, I'm not laughing at him. I'm not laughing at him. And found, and through conversation, has figured out that he hasn't been acting like a dragon. Go figure. So in the next course of a day. Spike has decided that, with the help of Twilight Sparkle, to try to track down his heritage. But they turn, it turns out that uh, ponies are usually way too f afraid, and dragons are a rare sight, to actually study the dragons or even talk to one. So Spike decides to go out on his own and figure out what does it mean to be a dragon? And where does his heritage come from? And maybe we'll finally wonder, we'll finally figure out where Spike came from. Who was his parents? Why was he picked up as an egg inside Princess Celestia's school of magic? Half of these questions are not asked, answered, so um, I guess they're good enough that they were brought up in the first place. So Spike is actually goes off and starts migrating with the rest of the dragons, going over into a volcano. Unbeknownst to him, Twilight, Rarity, and Rainbow Dash have followed in a very unique looking dragon suit. Of course, this dragon suit fools the dragons because there's another dragon that looks completely the same as them. It's quite a coincidence, really. And as a proper civilized person, pretty sure this is normal. Now, of course, Spike becomes upon a few teenage dragons who are being, well, ruffians, really, but who, t which teenagers aren't? Picking on poor Spike for looking like a hatchling, which he's not, he's much older, but still, he has to prove himself as a dragon, and after many ordeals, he does finally earn their trust, in which they finally say to be a true dragon, they must go out and raid a phoenix nest. Spike, of course, objects to this heinous activity, but goes along with it anyway. Therefore, they get chased by phoenixes, and one egg is left that is unhatched. Because they all hatched. Luckily. I guess the last one was a late bloom, huh? But anywho, Spike protects the egg, defying his dragon brethren and running off back to Ponyville where he belonged with the ponies. Because, yeah. And of course, in the end, Spike is now raising a baby phoenix, even though he knows exactly where the parents are and can return him in it at any time. Alright, I'm gonna stop with this civilized crap. Okay, this episode was 
Uh, it was pretty good. It's an 8 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10 for me. This was a really enjoyable episode. And though it brings up a lot of good questions like where did Spike's family come from? How did he become how did he get in cancer a lot if he's a dragon egg? Where is his parents? Who are his parents? These questions are not answered, and that is actually a huge disappointment to me. Other than that, my other pet peeve of this episode is that we only get to see the activities of teenage dragons. These are teenage boys and dragons. Of course they act like assholes. Every teenage boy is an asshole, especially if they're a dragon, because, well, dragons are supposedly have aggressive nature. That and you put, you know, anything with fire breathing and, you know, scales and put hormones in it. Of course you're going to get an aggressive douchebag. But still, these questions I really wanted to have answered. And also, where are the other hatchlings if they know that hatchlings exist and they have been seen and, you know, they go to certain places? Where were the hatchlings in this huge dragon migration? Were they in another part of the volcano? Or were they just left out and, you know, have dragon babysitters? something so honestly we got to see the culture of the dragons cliques like the little teenage cliques of the dragons but we never actually got to see any of the adult dragons actually do what they do do they were just kind of sitting around and chillaxing really honestly i wanted to see more of what these dragons could do and though I am actually very appreciative of actually being able to see something that the dragons do like they roughhouse they they vandalize crap they're teenagers they act like teenagers and honestly I actually think that was pretty cool and pretty genuine they're not brutes who just go around burning things and stealing crap most of the time to hoard for no reason they actually have a culture behind it. They act on these emotions and have, like, so it gave you a feeling of tradition to it. Like, these are the frat boys in the colleges that have done this for 30 years or whatever. I've never been in a frat house, so I don't know and I don't give a crap. So, honestly, this is actually a pretty good episode and I liked it for actually diving into some of the mythology of dragons in this universe though it could have gone deeper we could have gotten more answers and Twilight Sparkle honestly Twilight Sparkle Rarity and Rainbow Dash were kind of there only as a I want to say convenience maker because Honestly, you can take them out of the episode, or after Spike leaves, you could take them out of the episode, and Spike would be just kind of fine. Sure, they helped him win the first two um, competitions, like the, the tail wrestling and the king of the horde, but again, Spike ends up losing both of those anyway, on his own. Spike ends up falling off of the King of the Horde thing, and in the tail wrestling, he gets chunked against the wall. It's actually the lava pit where Sp Twilight Sparkle, Rarity, and Rainbow Dash, who don't do anything, it's only then does Spike actually get to prove himself a real dragon. So, honestly, you could take these three out of the whole equation, and honestly, the only reason I think they didn't do that is because it was a little too much of a gamble. This is a My Little Pony show, and most of your episode wouldn't have any ponies in it. That, and honestly, they did add some flavor to this episode. Even though the dragons weren't completely humorless, they weren't that funny. So having those three around to add some comic relief was pretty cool. But... Hey, I'm not complaining either. This episode was a really good one. I liked it. I really liked it. And it's just the fact that they didn't answer a few questions that they themselves brought up that really kind of makes me miffed. And also, I have a question about where Celestia's letter, what Celestia's letter said, because it might have actually explained some things. But it did show that dragons actually have no respect for Princess Celestia. 
And honestly, I think that's why every time a dragon shows up, the Princess Celestia either sends a team of racers and stunt pilot, stunt flyers, and Twilight Sparkle after the dragons because she probably has no real jurisdiction and can only ask for help from other ponies to, you know, say that she wasn't technically in it. She was just asking for favors. It would be, it would be a nice little political debate on that point. But other than that, this episode was, again, pretty good. And it brought up a lot of questions. It just needed more answers. And honestly, if you weren't going to answer those questions, why bring them up? Anywho, at least they didn't try to shoehorn any St. Paddy's Day crap because it is today. But for those who do celebrate St. Patrick's Day, happy St. Patrick's Day. And for the rest of y'all, I'll see y'all next time. Until then... Peace.